Here we go. Good. Uh, one of the purposes of that is, is so that we can make this event available to people who haven't been able to come along tonight, or indeed, if you all enjoy it so much and you want to, to repeat the experience, it will be available on our, our YouTube channel, um, probably from tomorrow is when I'll, I will try and post it. So you can come back, check on anything anybody said, or, or, or as I said, just listen to it again, or we'll pass it on to other people. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping before, before we get started. Uh, we've got four four speakers with us tonight. Uh, each one will be speaking for a while, and then we'll take a short short um, bunch of questions immediately afterwards. Uh, while people are speaking, I would ask if you could keep your mics uh, turned off. That's just in case your your dog decides to start playing up or your cat comes to ask for tea, uh, so the rest of us don't have to listen to it. Um, and if you have any questions that immediately spring to mind while you're listening to somebody speak, uh, just post them in the chat, and we will try and. Uh, um um pick them up afterwards um once we have completed this evening uh, again tomorrow when i'm posting the, the recordings i will be sending out a, a satisfaction survey to our to you all so i would ask if you if you could please fill that in and and, and give me some feedback because that helps us to uh to improve the uh the the range of webinars that we offer and how it's all organized um anyway so that's 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 the uh that's the uh, housekeeping. So as I said, we have four speakers with us tonight. We're going to start off with Sarah Armitage from the uh, Household Support Fund. Uh, and then we'll move on to Christina Campbell, uh, who works for the Norfolk Assistance Scheme. Jonathan Sa Saunders, who works for the Money Support Service. And last but by no means least, Caroline McInnes-McInnes from um, Dis and Thetford uh, CAB, who heads up the Norfolk uh, Energy uh, pro Project that... Uh, that the CAB run around the county. Anyway, so I will now pass you over because I know you don't want to listen to me to our first speaker, who is Sarah Armitage, the Community and Partnership and Partnership and Hardship Project Manager uh, from the Household Support Fund. So, Sarah, over to you if you can share your screen now, please. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, hopefully, you can see my screen. If somebody could just shout when you can. That would be good. All right, we're good to go. Yeah, brilliant. OK. OK, so, yeah, <clears throat> um, as Pete said, I'm Sarah Armitage, Community Partnership and Hardship Project Manager, work, working for Norfolk County Council. Um, I'm reasonably new into post. Um, I've been in post since August, but prior to that, I was working in adult social services for four years. Um, so this is all, quite a new agenda for me. but. Um, it's it's very interesting and exciting and I'm and I'm really glad to to be doing this role. So moving in, I just want to set the sort of scene really. So in terms of the context um, of the kind of hardship agenda and in particular the household support fund, which I'm going to be talking about this evening. Um, so the household support fund started in October 2021, initially for a six month period, and it was then extended for another six months um, up to April of this year and then um, sorry, up to September of this year and then extended again to the 30, I should say the 31st of March next year. So we've had three sort of tranches of, of funding, um, initially focused on supporting households affected by financial challenges. So the first sort of wave of funding was really uh, based on sort of recovery from COVID. And then obviously it's moved into the cost of living crisis, which is where we are now. We've had in total over 20 million pounds of funding, um, supporting over 115,000 households. And we've been doing that working in close partnership with our VCSE sector and our local councils, so the district, boroughs and city councils. Um, through that funding, we've supported 30,000 eligible for free school meal children with uh, food vouchers um, or Eden Red vouchers, should I say, in each of those six month periods. And we've also invested in the Nourishing Norfolk project, which you may have heard of, um, run by the Norfolk Community Foundation. And they have created uh, their food hubs or community supermarkets across Norfolk. And I'm gonna talk a bit more about them a bit later on. And then a further 220,000 in providing warm spaces, again, through Norfolk Community Foundation. And that uh, campaign is known, as you may have heard, as the Community Hotspots. And also supporting our libraries with um, grab and go warm bags and also um, 
period and hygiene bags for people to, to grab at, at libraries. However, that said, we do know obviously that the situation is likely to be very difficult going into winter. There's significant pressure on all services, um, meaning that we need to work together um, differently and in innovatively to, um, to, you know, to obviously have some impact on that. And we need to think about the longer term support that people receive because the funding is due to end in March 2023. Um, and we haven't had any indications that it is going to continue. So who's coming to us for help? So in terms of our um, NAS, our Norfolk application scheme, or sorry, Norfolk assistance scheme, um, there are four sort of main profiles of people who have been approaching us recently. So we've got 19% of very low income singles um, who are often employed, but likely to be living in flats or shared accommodation with income below 15,000 pounds. We've got our very low income uh, families uh, living in social housing and <clears throat> some of those in rural locations and with a household income of below £30,000 a year. And then also low income pensioners, so 17% who are living on less than £15,000 a year and again often in social housing and rural locations. And then perhaps a newer cohort of people who are seeking help through, through this round um, are what we're calling the just about managing families. So people who are often homeowners with mortgages, but with a low wage um, role with children and um, perhaps who haven't come to us before because they're now obviously starting to feel the pressure. So that's a, a kind of new, new cohort that we're seeing coming to us. I don't want to talk too much about this because Christina's on the call and she knows far more about this than I do. Um, but this is just to show you really the demand that we've had into the Norfolk Assistance Scheme um, going back to April 2021 through to September. So you can see there that we've got our applications, which are the bars on the graph and then our awards. So what's actually been awarded, which is the line. Um, so in terms of the applications, we can see obviously that they are they're going up. So we've had a couple of sort of peaks in April and also in, in December, so last winter um, throughout last year. But then you can see that the demand has risen over across this year and is obviously still going up and we're expecting it to go up even higher. Um, and the number of awards also has gone up in line with that. So we are awarding more, um, more cases as well. But as I say, Christina will cover that in probably in far more detail. This is interesting. So this is our um, heat map and I hope it's coming through on your screen, but what you should be able to see is, is obviously Norfolk there um, and our districts, our district boundaries. And what we're, what we're showing there are, are the number of um, applications to our NAS scheme um, across the county and where we can see the darker patches, they are obviously the higher number of applications. So um, if, if I was looking at this in live terms, I could zoom in and, and obviously, you know, zoom into an area and, and see how many applications in that area. But because this is just a, a screenshot, I, I just need to talk you through it. So if we look, for example, um, at Thetford, we can see we've got a darker colour um, there. Also Swaffham, Kings Lynn and over in Great Yarmouth um, and on, in Norwich as well, we've got a few. Um, and in some areas, such as perhaps, um, let's pick an area over here, sort of Wisbeach, Mar uh, not March, down a market, you've got areas which are very light. So we've had a um, few, few applications from those areas. So that gives us a, a real insight as to where the demand is coming from. Um, what we are also able to overlay there are what we're calling our assets. So in the top right hand corner, you can see NCC services. So we've got our libraries plotted on there in blue. So we can see where we've got libraries. And this is where, of course, people can access um, the grab and go bags that I mentioned earlier, the hygiene packs. And also all of the libraries are now operating um, through the winter, uh, free hot drinks, so self-service and, and snacks when they're open. So people can go in there there will be activities going on as well that they can participate in and, and other signposting to other services that might be of use to them. So we can see that we've got libraries in, in all of those areas where we're, we've, we're seeing a high demand for, for NAS applications. We've also got museums, which again are places that um, in terms of our assets that we can use to 
um, have information, um, possibly use some kind of warm spaces within there as well. And then finally on there, we've got our community supermarkets. So these are the ones that are part of that Nourishing Norfolk program. Um, and they range from um, community, um, sorry, community supermarkets in buildings. So for example, in town halls, I think in Hunstanton Town Hall, there's one. And also um, in shipping containers to perhaps the other extreme, um, which is a recently open one in Kenning Hall. So, and they're all run obviously by volunteers. And the idea of that is that they are, if you like, between a, a, a food bank and a normal supermarket so people can go there they can become a member and they can get food um, at obviously more affordable prices so that's that's what they're up to and we've got a couple of what we're calling sort of mobile provisions so I think in in North Norfolk around Hunstanton and Wells and Walsingham we've got a, a mobile provision so that goes from sort of town to town um, but again off, offering that facility so so this map will be built upon and when um, we get our community hotspots up and running they'll also be plotted on there so that we can start to see that we're putting you know some of those facilities in the places where we've got the highest demand if that makes sense hopefully it does so so that's something we're working on so we're really keen on using the data that we've got and the data that we can get also from our district partners to to help inform our our services and our provision so just coming back to, to the Household Support Fund. Um, so for the last round, which is round three, we received 6.7 million from the government. And this is really how we've allocated it out. So 3.6 million has gone to schools for them to pass on um, vouchers for those free school meal eligible children. And based on 30,000 children who are in that cohort, um, that basically provides them with um, 120 pounds per child across that six month period. We've then provided funding to our district, borough and city councils in terms of enabling them to proactively reach out to families and vulnerable households that they're aware of, perhaps people who have rent arrears or council tax arrears, um, who are known obviously to the housing teams and the idea is that they can target that funding to those people proactively and also a small element of that funding will be ring fence for emergencies so if people turn up um, knocking on the door saying they've got no food it's Friday afternoon and they've got no food or they've got no heating um, then they've got a, a small amount of money that they can use to, to basically help people in that crisis situation um, what they will also do as part of that, if, if that person presenting uh, requires further help, they will then refer them onwards to the Norfolk Assistance Scheme. We've provided almost half a million pounds worth of funding to the Norfolk Community Foundation, and they, uh, through their scheme, they will then go out to their partners, so community groups, uh, voluntary sector, to ask them to apply for some of that funding so that those groups can then help, again, the people within their communities who they're aware of, who are in hardship and who are struggling. And um, that I believe that is still open for communities, for community groups, faith groups, parish councils, et cetera, to apply for that funding through the Norfolk Community Foundation website. Um, and then once that funding has round has, has finished, obviously the funding will go out and, and those families can be helped. In addition to that, we've also provided 220,000 pounds to Norfolk Community Foundation for them to provide the community hotspots that I mentioned earlier. And as well as other funding that they get through their own fundraising and donations, um, they will be able to hopefully provide funding to up to about 130 different organizations across Norfolk to help with the core costs of running and setting up those uh, hotspots, warm spaces, whatever you want to call them. Um, that the first funding round has now closed. So they've had, I think they had over 150 applications for that funding. And they're now going through, um, obviously making sure that, pe that, that the um, grants are uh, eligible etc and then they'll be awarding that funding and hopefully those hotspots will be in place um, really shortly.
and it might be that a lot of those community groups are already running those um, those warm spaces, but this funding will help provide them perhaps with core cost again towards heating, energy, etc., for for the places and the buildings that they're working in. I've mentioned libraries, so we're providing libraries with um, eighty four thousand pounds to to provide those packs that I that I mentioned earlier. And then finally, the Norfolk Assistance Scheme um, that Christine is going to talk more about have had £2.7 million of, of that funding to cover the expected higher demand that we're expecting over winter uh, for that service. So the total of that, as you can see, adds up to 7.9. So Norfolk have invested, Norfolk County Council have invested a further £1.2 million to that fund so that we can provide all of that support. So the rationale for the for the supports, I've already talked about some of this, so I'll kind of skip through it. But um, we obviously want to continue to support the lowest income households with children, which is why we've continued with the um, uh, in red vouchers for the, for those eligible families. Uh, we recognise the importance of having that emergency support at a district level, um, so that so that the districts have that funding to be able to help those people and also the proactive element of that so that they can again using their data and our data recognize and, and target those people that are that are struggling and, and to help them pay off either rent arrears council tax arrears um, and then put them on the path through to the norfolk assistance scheme for further support um, both again funding support but also more of a holistic support which christina i'm sure will talk about um, we know that a lot of the people in the community, perhaps a lot of them don't already have formal services with us as a Norfolk County Council, um, and maybe not aware of the services that we that we do offer, but, but we also know that they do have those trusted relationships with their community groups, with their parish councils, uh, and with the leaders in those communities, so we're really keen to continue funding those organisations so that they can continue to, to give that support to those families. Um, so I'm going to just skip on to the next slide. So this, this slide um, talks further about the Nourishing Norfolk project that I mentioned earlier, and this shows on, on, a, on a separate map where those community supermarket stroke food hubs are. So we can see that the green ones are already launched, so they're up and running. Um, and this is say slightly out of date because the world's community food van it has now launched, so that, that should be green. The ones in yellow are in development. So at the moment, we've got 10 live. Um, and by the end of this year, so by the end of December, we should have um, 15 altogether up and running. So that's the plan, supporting over 15,000 people. <clears throat> and then the ones in red are potential food hubs. So this is where we've um, identified, obviously, a need going back to our the graph or the sorry the map that I showed you earlier we can see where we've got those areas of real really high demand um, so we're wanting to make sure that we're putting that provision where that demand is okay and then the community hotspots uh, so this was the 220,000 pound investment um, so if you want to find out more about them head over to the Norfolk Community Foundation website um, but as I say that that funding has now um, we've now had those applications in, Norfolk Community Foundation are just going through um, and, and finalising those grants and then they will be, be out as well, so that's, that's really good. And in addition to ourselves, um, also to say that Kings Lynn and West Norfolk Borough Council, along with Norwich City Council, have also provided funding for that, for that project. And then I think this is my last slide. So. Um, on the 7th of November, we did launch um, a shared campaign with, um, with, with health in terms of the Warm and Well campaign. So you may have seen some of these um, posters that you can see on the right hand side there, either on social media, you may have heard um, on global radio stations because there's also messaging going out through there. Uh, basically where to point people in, in the right direction. And, and the main themes of that campaign is firstly about prevention. So trying to make sure that people, you know, are thinking ahead for the winter, making sure that they, you know, they're not running into Christmas with, with no food or no heating. Um, and, and just to make sure that they're, 
you know, trying to think ahead where, where, where they can and have that capacity to do so. Um, choosing the right health service. So again, promoting and encouraging use of um, other health resources. So things like pharmacies, um, 111 service, etc. Vaccinations, obviously encouraging people to take up the vaccinations that are available to them. And then what I've been talking about, the whole hardship support. So pointing people in the right direction, making sure they're aware of what help is out there um, and getting that information across on our website. And obviously, um, as I say, across social media and those other, other channels. And then mental health and winter wellbeing. So that's really what that warm and well communications campaign looks like. So I think that's my last slide. So I'm gonna stop sharing um, if you bear with me. Excellent, Sarah, thank you very much for that. I, I, I would just add that actually I was speaking to Laura over at um, Norfolk Community Foundation and, and she was saying to me that they've approved 126. Oh, uh, brilliant, yeah. Of, of the hotspot applications. So we should be seeing those coming on board. Uh, fairly quickly and and there is the potential for for one one or two more so I yes yeah to people what that means is together with the work that the, the with the um uh the libraries with the uh, drop-in services at the libraries and and with some of the work that the uh, faith groups have been doing that we should be seeing you know in excess of mm -hmm. of 200 um locations around the county where people can go to uh, to, to to get a warm drink and uh, and a snack right. and and hopefully some other useful activities because I know that's the that's the that's the aim of the of the hotspot funding is to is to do more than just just provide a refuge but to actually you know, help people get something more out of it anyway so yeah. we, as, as I mentioned before we've got a chance we've got an opportunity now if anybody has any uh, burning questions if there's anything you'd like to to, to ask uh, Sarah now there is while you're while you're asking that piece there is one thing I forgot to say sorry which is that in addition to all of that um, we are producing a cost of living support leaflet so a, a, a hard copy um, it's kind of a five size and I think four um, four pages and that will basically summarize all of that support that I've just talked through um, plus additional information like obviously citizens advice bureau links um money saving expert money helper so links telephone numbers um yeah. and website addresses on a hard copy and we're going to be getting those out um to for example parish councils the police the fire the schools the libraries the hotspots so because we do recognize that not everybody has access to the internet and also um that you know where we've got for example, the hotspots is a really good example, isn't it? Um, we've got people coming in there because they want to keep warm, perhaps they want some company um, and you know they're struggling with other things, then why not give them that leaflet while they're there so that they've got all the information to hand? So that, that was something else that we're just finalizing now. Yeah, excellent. Okay, Joanne, you, you had your hand up first, if I can ask you <clears> on <throat> mute, and, th and then we've got a couple of others as well. Good evening, everyone. I um, just wanted to introduce myself. So I'm Jo Howe, and I've recently been appointed as um, the Food Hub Supervisor for Watton, which is um, a new initiative. So I basically started on Monday, so I'm very, <laughs> very fresh into it. Um, it's been an interesting week already, you know, lots of learning going on. But I just wanted to say I, I'd be very interested in sort of um, getting our little hub registered as a warm space as well. Um, so is that something that I could um, maybe do through this Norfolk Community Foundation, do you think, or is it too late for applications already? Te technically, it has closed. That's my right. understanding from Laura. Um, but it, it 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 might be worthwhile trying again because I know they 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 did have a little bit left over. Or the other place you could you could possibly try is the ASDA community grants. If you got go if you go to the ASDA website and look up for their community grants, there is some funding available through those. So that's worth exploring. Okay, I, so I think I we know. won't be sort of open, you know, for a good few weeks yet anyway. Because as I said, literally brand new to yep. this. So. Um, thank you anyway, and it's been really interesting. Thanks, uh, Sarah. Sarah, do you want to add anything to what I said? Um, the only other thing, I didn't know if you were you were looking for funding or whether you were just, because you said register your, your place. I know you can register um, on the Warm Welcome website. So I think it's www.warmwelcome.co.uk. So that 
you know when you were ready you could register your um your facility as so that people can find it when searching and that that's certainly where the norfolk community foundation are, are putting will be putting all of their hotspots on but in terms of funding yes pete's right if you want want to register an interest for future funding then i'd, I'd certainly uh, speak to laura or one of the team at the norfolk community foundation yeah great thank you thanks pauline you were next Thank you. Um, with the Norfolk Community Foundation grant, this new one for the um, utility bills, we did try once before. We got funding before, which we only end up spending on food, although I see this one can't be spent on food. The problem is, how do we put money on someone else's utility bill? I tried to do it online. It failed. Do I go to the person's house? I mean, I thought, do I take a photograph of their bill, come home and do it on my bank? I mean, how do I physically everyone's got a different system they put cash on them things or they do it online I don't know how we do it realistically you can go to someone's house and say can I see your bill please mm. yeah sorry did you want to go Pete well I was, I was going to say I, I would I would have thought perhaps Caroline is the is, is the best person to answer that I mean we, we, we're going to be speaking later Caroline I don't know if you want to pick that up now quickly um yes it's very it's relatively easy for prepayment meter customers um, except when they have smart meters and they maybe just do online payments. Um, so people who top up at a post office or a, a pay point, it's relatively easy to get. So would you go uh, with them with the cash or? No, think... no, we would always use a third party voucher provider. So that's what we do at the moment is we. So how, how if we apply for this grant from Norfolk Community yeah. Foundation and we get it, how do we then get these vouchers? Um, you'd probably have to set up a. Uh, I'd recommend setting up an account with a third party, a bit like Norfolk County Council did with the Eden Red, where you've got a, a third party. There's organisations that you can buy vouchers through and then you're not actually giving cash to anyone. You're putting it a voucher in somebody's name. Um, but yeah, it's really difficult when it comes to credit customers, which is why we really welcomed having the access to the supermarket vouchers in previous rounds of funding, mm -hmm. because we had the funding we could support certain clients with prepay, but for those we knew who were struggling who were credit customers, and they might not be suitable for a prepayment meter, mm. then we were able to give an additional a supermarket instead and as an alternative. Yes. Uh, and we knew that would go into their household um, budget and hopefully help to offset their energy costs. It's mm. not easy. I mean, we're looking yeah. at it and I'm also thinking, I know it's very difficult. Other offices have found when they've tried to credit people's accounts. Some some energy companies are easier than others. Mm. Might and actually, we we did get those Eden Red vouchers. Um, whatever it was, the other Easter, and uh, out of the twelve we gave out, two people said they didn't work. And obviously, as far as Broadland said, well, we can see they've been activated. So then we have to say that people are you like you know are you lying? We found that quite difficult. Um, you know, I'm just saying. Mm. I, th I think there are a lot of challenges. Uh, perhaps we can move on though and come, come back to that later when we actually deal with the with the energy stuff. Sue, you you uh, you had your hand up as well. Yes, please. Um, so we have uh, made use of uh, and been helping the um, older generation and the younger people. The Just About Managing group, um, the Jams, which um, we're hearing from a lot more in in our village, particularly where do we go for help for those because most of the support schemes that are that we've come across seem to be for either um under 18s or over 65s um yeah i know that if uh, in previous rounds of the household support fund there were um government guidance around the sort of ring fencing of funding and particularly for the last round of fund the last um round of funding round two um there was a big emphasis on over 65s to try and obviously target those people for this particular round there is no ring fencing so there is um there is no ring fencing so so the funding can can be used for vulnerable families who are in hardship and there and there's no I say there's no ring fencing so in terms of where those families can go then obviously christine is going to talk about the norfolk assistance scheme and she's got a hand up so she might be coming in with I'll another answer the question yeah yeah i would say they need to apply to nas so if they're just about managing um and they are below our income threshold um even if they're above our 
income threshold. We can look at discretionary awards, but they do need to come to us so that we can give them the whole service. So that's fuel, <coughs> food, oil, whatever. You'll see in the presentation what we've got on offer. Which I think neatly takes us on <laughs> to, to your uh, your presentation then, Christus, Christina. So if I could ask you to share, share your screen now and, and take us yep. on to the next section. Let me see if I can just get that. That's it. So my name's Christina Campbell. I'm the manager of the Norfolk Assistance Scheme, and I've been in post since April 2018. So prior to the pandemic, we went all through the pandemic and uh, we're coming out the other end into a cost of living crisis. So it's been quite a challenging time. So as Sarah said, we now have the funding from HSF3. Um, and this one for us is easier because, as Sarah said, it's not ring fenced. But in the guidance, it did mention people who may not have been eligible for other support in previous household support funding. So that is especially the jams. So they're just about managing, they're out to work. And as Sarah said, they may have high childcare costs so actually their disposable income can be a lot less than somebody who isn't working so we really are trying to target them and I'm really excited to be here this evening and have made the contact with Pete because it's really important that we reach out to the parish councils and the town councils and let them know what's available for their community and hopefully for you as the councillors to encourage people to apply to us. A lot of people think if they're working, they can't apply to us and that's not the case. We often have people come to us who are working and they'll ask the question, can I apply? And it's absolutely yes, anybody can apply if they live in Norfolk and they're over 16. And then we will look at what intervention we can help them with. So it's really important that people are encouraged to apply. Um, obviously, we want to include all low income families, especially those with children. We did a lot of work with pensioners in HSF2. So hopefully they know more about us now because they're a very hard to reach group. They're very proud. They don't like asking for help and they'll pay all their bills and end up with nothing in their cupboards to eat. So that we would really encourage as well with your older um, community members to encourage them and to say, they're not, you know, this money has been given to us to distribute through the Norfolk County to all of the community if they're in need. So it's, it, it, they're not asking for help, we're distributing that money that's already been given to us. Um, we, we like to look at unpaid carers as well, who are looking after people, friends or relatives, care leavers and our group of people with disabilities, whether that's mental health, physical disability or learning disability. And we're really targeting in HSF3 energy and food and then we can look at other related essentials as it says on the slide. So this is basically what we do. So when somebody applies to us, we review their DWP, we have access to the DWP database, and this is to ensure that they're receiving all the benefits that they should be, and that they're not receiving any benefits that they shouldn't be because sometimes people will forget to give a change of circumstances. They're not being fraudulent. It's just slipped through the net. We also have um, access to the social care database. So we can look on there to see, A, if, there's, if they've disclosed something like they're fleeing domestic abuse, we can see a record of that and a chronology of when that was going on. We can see what help they are receiving through the statutory bodies in NCC. So people like social workers, 
assistant practitioners, family support practitioners. Um, and we can also see if they've fallen out of that support, that they've then disengaged from support. And that could be one of the reasons why they're now finding themselves in crisis. We ask people for two months bank statements for the two months prior to their application. This can be waived if they have a disability or a learning disability and they can't access their bank statements. They can send their bank statements by post, email or attach them to the application form if they're digitally savvy. Um, but we do have people that we say, actually, we're not going to push for your bank statements because it's clear you can't provide them or you have no recourse to public funds. So you haven't got a bank account. And quite often those people will have a support worker who can verify the need. So we won't just say it's not a blanket. Yes or no. Um, when somebody comes to us, obviously we have homeless people come to us. For example, we had a man come to us today. He had no phone. He was, he was phoning us from the Ark in Norwich and we had to try and help him. So we signposted him to go to the district council, make his homeless application. We told him where there was hot food provision and food banks. We told him where the hostels were, and we also got some vouchers out to him via the ARC, who printed them off for him so he could go to the supermarket. And what we tried to encourage those people to do is buy what we call kettle food, so food that can be made with a kettle. So if he's in a hostel and he's got a kettle, he's going to be able to feed himself. For those who have a tenancy, um, as the lady before was speaking about, it is very difficult to pay on somebody's um, account if they've got a monthly direct debit or they pay quarterly. Some providers will let us do it, some, some providers won't. So if they've got a prepayment meter, we will give them a pay point payment to load their prepayment meter with 25 to 425 pounds depending what cohort they fall into if they haven't got a prepayment meter and we can't credit their account we will give the equivalent of that to them in eden red vouchers to offset the cost of their energy then we do the eden red supermarket vouchers um, or we will use community supermarkets. We can provide um, a community supermarket voucher. Again, depending what cohort they fall into, this is between 50 and 250 pounds per single person or couple, and between 25 and 120 per child. The, um, for, Oh, sorry, yeah, I've misread what I'd put on there. <laughs> the, um, it's capped at two adults and two children. So if we get a big family, it is capped at two adults and two children in line with the universal credit cap. Um, on the second application to, to HSF3, it's the same as the first application for food and fuel plus a pink orange box for eight weeks. Pink Orange is a charity in Suffolk and they did a lot of work with the schools in Suffolk during the pandemic. And they deliver a bit like, um, what's that? Uh, I can't think of what it's called. The, you know, the way you buy the boxes each week, it's the same type of model um, and it has kind of, cupboard fillers, um, it'll have cleaning materials, toiletries, treats when available, and that's for, for four meals for eight weeks, however big that family is. We also can pay off arrears of utility bills up to £1,000 if they haven't had an award in HSF2. 
The reason we've put that in there is, as I'll tell, move on to in a minute, it's very important that people start to become proactive about their budgeting and sorting out their bills themselves. So if we've paid off their arrears before and they've got into arrears again since HSF2, we will have to have that difficult conversation with them to say what why has this happened again? It may not be enough for how much electricity you use, but we need to have that difficult conversation with them. We can pay off 500 pounds waters arrears, and we can pay 500 pounds broadband mobile phone arrears if not awarded again in HSF2. Again, we'll have to have that conversation. We can look at people who've got rent arrears is if they're declined a discretionary housing payment by the district council, but they have to have accrued those arrears before they went into benefit, because once they go into benefit, they get either the housing benefit or housing allowance on their UC. So that's kind of the criteria and remit for rent arrears. But we do have people come to us that have been declined and have lost their job and they accrued some arrears while they was, before they went into benefits. Um, we do household items. We do lots and lots of different household items. We have a reuse model. Um, so in, we will always try to use a reuse product before we buy a new one to tie in with the Norfolk County Council waste strategy. And that includes cookers, fridges, freezers. We do kitchen packs. We do digital items. So we have reused computers. Those applications must be um, supported by a support worker. So it will need to be somebody who's perhaps looking to go into work or they're suffering from isolation and loneliness um, or they would need a computer to do virtual support with a support organization. We do clothing, we do school uniform. Um, I'll show you the kind of whole offer in a minute. So that's kind of the financial support. And then the really important part that goes alongside that is the holistic support. So when somebody comes to us, they're quite often at rock bottom. They may have never had any support. They may have disengaged with their support. They may be really shut down. They've got their head in the sand. They don't know where to go. So while we have that person, as a case in NAS, we will try to do everything we can for them. So we do a lot of referrals over to other support organization. All of my staff have been trained in substance abuse, domestic abuse, mental health, and we also have a bespoke referral training that we had written for the NAS team. So they will speak to that person, they'll have those difficult conversations and they will encourage them to take support to address the underlying issues that tip them into crisis. Now that well may be, and quite often is, a referral to John's team, the money support service, because the person that's come to us is not budgeting. They, when, when you, get kind of to into the state where you're deeply in debt a lot of people will just give up and just stop paying their bills and that's when we'll send them over to John's team and they will speak to them do all the work that John will tell you about when he comes on next but we also do a lot of work with the domestic abuse charities and CGL which is our substance abuse charity MIND and we will refer them. We don't signpost them. We will refer them. We do the referral with them. We'll even do the first phone call with them. If they're really nervous and really shut down, we'll say, right, OK, we'll make that first, first phone call with you to give them the confidence to enter into that support. So that's really, really important. We'll also apply for alternative grants. Um, but John's team also does a lot of that alongside us. Um, 
so we we um, do a lot of our referrals through NCAN, um, which is a portal that has um, about over a hundred now support organisations where you can fill out one referral but you can put it to more than one organization. So that person doesn't have to keep retelling their story because that's something that people get really tired of and it, and it creates a bad customer journey. Um, there's also a CAB database that we use. NAS has its own database. And if it's something really unusual, my team will just research it and find the most appropriate support organization for that person. Within our team, as well as John with the Money Support Service, we have the Welfare Rights team. So if somebody has a complex benefit issue, say they've been refused for PIP and they've put in a mandatory reconsideration, we will get them over to the Welfare Rights team to support with that process. Um, we also have an abuse and safeguarding officer we have had circumstances where we've found that somebody with learning disabilities clearly on their bank statement, somebody at, they were paying for somebody else's car tax insurance. They didn't drive, they didn't have a car. So if we get something like that, that will go over to our financial abuse and safeguarding officer. Um, we're also really fortunate that we work with the pathway advisors who are on the lowest tier of children's services, and we can get them to engage with the family within 24 to 48 hours. So if we have a family who repeatedly come to us saying they've got no food, they've got no fuel, all their benefits are in place, they may, may have been over to John's team and done the bu budgeting work, but they still keep coming back, we will encourage them to take a referral with the pathway advisors who can then escalate that if necessary, but they know a lot of what's going on in the community and they can give them a lot of advice. Um, obviously, we do any safeguarding um, referrals if we get somebody who, who we feel has got a safeguarding issue and um, we will liaise with any support workers that are already in place. So, so we really unpick our applicant and see what's the best course of action for them, financial, but especially the ongoing, because we don't want the Norfolk Assistance Scheme to be a sticking plaster. We have a non-cash model um, because we do award quite high rates um, and we want to ensure that that's being spent on the correct things. I think in other counties, they do have a cash model, but they tend to award at lot, much lower rates. Um, I've got a case study here, which I won't go through. Are we going to share our PowerPoints, Pete? Yeah, we, we will be sharing everything. So, so okay. you, we, we need to ping through a bit as well. So, yeah, so this is, this is our case study, um, which shows the situation of this person and what we did for them. So that's kind of the holistic and the financial support we gave this person. And this is basically what we do. So food, we can do bespoke food. We always talk about Brenda 93 in Winterton who can't get out, can't go to the supermarket and is digitally excluded. We'd give her a microwave and some Wiltshire food the ready-made foods. Um, obviously the supermarket vouchers, but we also do phone top-ups, payments of debt recovery orders. Um, what's quite important for those of you in very rural areas, we can help with um, fuel for cars. So I know, you know, in some of our areas in Norfolk, there's just no public transport. People can't get to the supermarket, et cetera. So we can help people get to work. Um, obviously, all the kind of household goods that we do. We can do removal costs. So that's quite um, useful. And we can also do storage costs for people that are evicted from their tenancy so that they don't lose all their possessions. 
Um, we do the laptops, as I mentioned, smartphones, especially for those looking for um, work or seeking accommodation. We can do Wi-Fi dongles for those that um, can't afford to have a regular payment for broadband. So that's the offer. So there's lots and lots of different things on there. And something that is especially important to remember with NAS is we're really, really lucky that, that we can do discretionary awards. So we've done some really unusual things. So for example, in lockdown, we gave a child with learning disabilities a trampoline because she wasn't able to go to her childcare. We've done wheelchair ramps. Um, I just can't we've done we've done a lot of unusual things so and so unless it's really out of the ballpark please do either contact us or put in an application or encourage someone to put in an application because we may be able to do a discretionary award this is how you do your application so this is for those who are able you can do it online if not, you can call the customer service centre and they will take an application from you over the phone. We have a phone line, which as you can imagine is very, very busy, but it has a voicemail and we tend to encourage people with existing applications to call that line because then they can be put straight through to the advisor who is looking after their case. We have our own email. And I have two team leaders who work with me, Nathan Agate, who does food and fuel, and Hannah Edwards, who does items. And then I've just popped on the bottom here is a leaflet that we're using until Sarah's new lovely leaflet with everything on it is produced. Um, and it's basically, if you want to print it, I can send it to you electronically. If you'd like hard copies, I can give you a hard copy. You can put it up on your notice boards in your parishes, um, just to spread the word and let everybody know what's available to them. And that's that from me. Excellent, thank you very much. There's, there's loads of stuff there. I have to say, I wasn't aware of, and I've been I've been looking into into this for some weeks. So I'm sure there's information for everybody. And, and, and just to add, it. I, I will arrange for a copy of that leaflet to be available through our website. So, so that'll be another avenue that people will be, able, will be able to get hold of hold of it. Um, so we've got time just quickly for a, for a few questions. If anybody has anything they want to ask Christina now, Leanne, that was very quick. I'm impressed. <laughs> you can go first. I was just wondering, do can people make their own applications or do they need to be nominated by like a district councillor or anything? No, they can make their own application online or ring the phone line. And probably I would say over 50% of our applications are from individuals who've heard about us and they and they do make the application themselves. Okay, so it's just a matter of getting the word out to everybody then. Exactly, yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. I have to say the NAS link is at the top of our top our top of our advice leaflet that I that I've circulated to everybody. And I can see you've got your hand up. Do you um you said in your presentation that um, there was support for fuel? Obviously, in rural Norfolk, um, a lot of our um, homes and families um, are connected to oil. So, is an exception made for that sort of um, fuel crisis? Yeah, absolutely. We we do a lot of oil um, and we've now um, entering into partnership with the um, Norfolk Oil Consortium. Um, and the reason that we're working with them is because we want to encourage people to set up a savings scheme yeah. and start paying a little bit each month. Because, as I said, we, we've got to try and encourage some independence and we don't know what the future holds as Sarah said this funding we have now finishes in March yes okay we'll be going into nicer weather hopefully but we don't know if we're going to have any extra funding next winter so we want to encourage people to sign up and then if we do get further funding and they want oil it would be really great if they came to us and said okay you gave me my oil last time I signed up for my savings scheme I've saved up £150, but that's not enough for a delivery. Well, that's fantastic. 
they've made that effort, they've tried to budget and they get, you know, it, it's just trying to get everybody to, to be proactive and to try and look after themselves and not, because some people can become dependent on us and, and it's not fair if we create that dependency because we don't know what funding we're gonna have after March. So that's really important, but definitely oil, that's a big one for the winter for all our rural people. Right, okay, we're, we're running a bit late now. So uh, I'm gonna move on now to uh, Jonathan Saunders, who's going to talk to us about the uh, money support service. So Jonathan, over to you. Thanks very much, Peter. Um, I will share this. People can give me a shout when it uh, pops up. It's there, coming. Excellent. Here we go. Uh, okay. If people are happy for me to run through it like this, uh, can't seem to get this out of the way so I can make it full screen. Um, never mind, as long as we're happy with that. Um, so I'm Jonathan Saunders. I manage the money support service for North County Council. Um, I've done designed this to be a fairly short and sharp presentation. Um, so I'll run through. And then if there's any questions, people can feel free to just ask them once I've finished or um, I'm happy to be contacted uh, via email, phone. And there's an email address at the end of the presentation I can be reached on. So the Money Support Service was set up and is designed to support Norfolk residents with budgeting, debt management. Um, and we do this through the provision of a holistic financial review um, and supporting individuals to then plan their spending, uh, maximise their income and ensure that they are as far as possible in a better position going forwards than they were when they came to us. So the service itself consists of six advisors um, and an assistant, um, myself. Uh, we sit within client finance services within Norfolk County Council. Um, any of the guys within the team are happy to answer questions or receive referrals, um, and any of them will be able to, to help. Primarily, since March 2020, we have been a remote service so our interventions are delivered via the telephone um, and what we do is done we can offer video calls where that's needed uh, but primarily what we do is remote um, we do still have scope to do in-person visits in the community where there's a barrier to interacting remotely over the phone um, but primarily what we do is is delivered remotely so people can access us any time during the day from any location that suits them um, and we will take them through our process and send them all the documents once we're done. We also provide support to internal NCC teams around signposting and information um, and we're also happy to be approached for information by third parties if that's something we can be of assistance with. Our tagline at the bottom there is a bit wordy, but it kind of sums up pretty much what we do, which is to help people identify their income and outgoings, assist them to create a budget, and we use a standard financial statement to do that, which is a spreadsheet effectively, um, which can be printed out or used electronically. We'll supply that at the end of our intervention. Um, that helps people to see what they've got coming in, see what they've got going out, and hopefully we can offer some guidance around wiser choices in terms of spending. And we'll also review people's benefit income to maximise what they've got coming in. Hopefully this will help people to address debt, manage their finances better and plan for their financial future through our support and that holistic financial review. So the money management advice helps clients to reduce expenditure and maximise income. The maximisation of income is generally through a benefit check to see if there are any eligible benefits that could be claimed but aren't being claimed. 
generally we tend to find there are enhancements or premiums to existing benefits that haven't been claimed and added. Um, we've had a few fairly good results with claiming premiums. Um, I think a few months back we had a £10,000 back payment awarded to a client um, who had an entitlement to a premium on their benefit that wasn't in payment and that was backdated. We had quite a bit of success with the maximising income. Reduction of expenditure is generally guidance around where people may be able to make better choices um, with their spending. We'll have a look at utilities, we'll have a look at phone and broadband, we'll have a look at water rates, um, supermarket shopping, just general expenditure to see where we may be able to support a reduction. There's a lot of managing expectations in what we do. Um, I would very much like a 40 inch TV and a Ferrari, but I can't afford one, so I haven't got one. Um, and there are a few lifestyle lifestyle management sessions that we, we can take people through in order to uh, give them a reasonable view of what they can expect on the income they've got. We'll support with access to the government's Breathing Space programme. Um, breathing Space was introduced not so long back, about 12 months ago, I think now, um, and is a debt respite scheme which stops people getting pursued by their creditors for a period of time um, during which they can take on some FCA regulated advice around that debt. Um, they can come up with a plan to manage the debt going forwards. We tend to refer to FCA regulated provision for that advice as at the top end of the scale, it can include about advice around debt relief orders, bankruptcy and other things. Um, and we can support with access to the breathing space as part of our intervention. And also we'll do the referrals through and help people access that support with an FCA regulated provider. At present, we're using Citizens Advice Bureau's debt team and also the Norfolk Community Law Service to provide that advice. As Christina mentioned, we do have the Welfare Rights team for more complex benefits issues fairly straightforward benefits problems we can help to address but anything more complex such as appeals against sanctions and things like that will refer through to that welfare rights team to get some expert support with. Everybody gets the option to complete a standard financial statement. We like to think of ourselves as a bit of a buffet service so not everybody has to take advantage of each element of the service. You can kind of pick and choose what's going to be most useful for you. Um, but we do recommend going through the standard financial statement to each client and, and we'll try and support them to do that where we can. We do get some people who come through who've forgotten more about budgeting than I'll ever know. Um, so in those instances, we will sort of skip that step and move on to other support that we can offer. We are able to assist with sourcing and applying for grant funding where there's a specific need. Um, there's a slide in a bit which covers a little of that, um, but we've had from the sort of higher end of the applications awards made for first time installation of boilers and radiators um, where central heating hasn't been installed previously and grants have ranged anywhere between six and ten thousand pounds for the installation of those systems. Um, we also are able to apply for grants for energy, fuel, oil, food, clothing, white or we've had double glazing installed in one instance. Um, so there's a whole range of grants that we can support people to find and apply for. Where we reach the end of our ability to support through our intervention, we will then signpost on to external agencies for crisis or specialist support where that's required. And that can be from a range of third sector partners. Um, we use Shelter, uh, CAB, uh, AUK. There's a whole range of, of organisations we can refer to. So each person has a telephone session with us. As I say, we can do the in-person one where that's not possible. 
we tend to allow two hours for our intervention. Um, it can be a little bit longer where there are more complex cases and we can allocate that time. But generally we would advise someone to expect to be with us on the phone for about two hours to get through everything we need to. The first hour is usually completing the budget and going through income and expenditure. And then the second hour is looking at where we can support with grant funding um, and offering guidance around expenditure and income. So once we've completed our intervention, complex cases will be signposted to specialist provision. So where we're not able to support, we will complete those referrals or signpost individuals to places they can get support. We'll provide the client with their personal budget documentation and copies of anything else we've filled out on their behalf. We'll do signposting for further support um, internal to the council and external. So if there are internal support systems that people can take advantage of within Norfolk County Council, we'll put people in touch with them or we'll signpost out to third sector. We will support with referrals for debt management where that's needed. Um, and we can support with disability related expenses claims where there is an assessment for a financial contribution towards the cost of someone's care if they are receiving a funded care package from Norfolk County Council and they've got a contribution to make we can help them to claim expenses they have specifically related to their disability which can then be taken to the cost of the contribution that they're asked to make. We do all of that as part of that kind of end intervention. This is a fairly wordy slide, so I won't run through it, but uh, Peter does have a copy of the slides um, and they will be available so people can reference them later. But this just outlines some of the interventions and grants that we've managed to secure for our clients. Um, and there's a whole range there, I've, I've covered some of them. Three, two, one. Hopefully everyone's had a look at it. The referral process um, is generally through our liquid logic system for Norfolk County Council professionals. However, we do have a referrals email that's set up um, for anyone outside of Norfolk County Council who doesn't have access to liquid logic. We have a public facing telephone line where people can phone. Um, we're not limited to referrals by professionals. Individuals can phone us themselves um, and self-refer. People external to Norfolk County Council can use this referrals email um, and just send a referral form through to us, which is fairly straightforward. Um, it looks a little like this. There's a bit of information that we request. Um, this allows us to find the person on our system and see what information we may hold about them and also to record our intervention. The brief outline of reason for referral just gives us an idea of what intervention we're completing with that client. It gives me the opportunity to ensure that the referral goes to the most qualified or most experienced advisor in that area. Um, and also when we call someone pretty much out of the blue to say you've had a referral to us, um, we can give them a bit of information about why we're contacting them. That pretty much covers my presentation. I do have a slide for questions. So if there is anything anyone would like to ask, I'm happy to do what I can to answer. Right, so does anybody have any, any immediate questions for, for Jonathan at the moment about the MSS service and the offer? I'm not seeing any hands going up. If you do think of something, you can post it afterwards and, and we will we will pass questions on if you want to post something in the chat you don't want to deal with now. Um, but otherwise, we'll now go over to a Caroline who'll be talking to us about the offer from the CAB service to help with uh, energy and fuel debt. Right, we've got your... Yeah. Screen, Caroline. That's lovely. If you want to... Um, yeah, you are muted now. Yeah. Okay. There we go. I will try and rush through these because I'm conscious of, of time. Um, so I'm Caroline Mackinson and I work for Disney Thetford Systems Advice, but I'm leading a partnership with um, throughout Norfolk called Norfolk Warm and Wise, which is a county-wide project providing energy advice. 
Um, for anyone who doesn't know, Citizens Vice, we are a charity. We're independent charities and part of a national network of citizen advice. We offer free, impartial, confidential advice. Um, traditionally, our advice was delivered face to face, um, but obviously since the pandemic, we've increasingly been delivering by phone and online. And we do have a team of specialist advisors in the energy team, um, but a lot of our advice is also delivered by trained volunteers. So we are still offering face-to-face -face advice, um, offices throughout Norfolk, um, and we do obviously try and prioritise those clients who can't access the internet and language barriers and so on to, to try and see them face-to-face. -face. Another aspect of our work is the research and campaigning. So you'll hear a lot on the news. Um, well, the last 18 months, I'd say there's been lots about energy and often they're referring to that information that we've collected locally at Systems Advice and um, lobbying government to, to bring about changes, whether it's through the energy industry or um, improvements to how people are being supported with energy. Um, obviously the prices of energy have absolutely shot up. Um, there is now this energy price guarantee. Um, so the average price of energy for a household from October's 2,500. But as we know from working with people, 2,500 is quite an underestimate for lots of people if they've got a poorly insulated house, if they've got a larger family, if they've got um, inefficient heating in their property. Um, so it, it's, it's very difficult to budget often for energy because there isn't a fixed amount. It's really depending on how much you're using and how your, how your circumstances are. So that's the kind of thing we would explore with people looking in more detail. So the main three messages I would say is, is firstly communicating. Secondly, we try and look at how we can save energy. And thirdly, looking at health. We've heard obviously a lot about the help that's available in Norfolk at the moment for people. So some of the key messages I would say for people around energy is providing regular meter readings is absolutely key. So many people that come to us really need help because then their bills are a complete mess and often it's not their fault they might have a smart meter the energy providers don't often send around meter readers and they don't always calibrate the bills so we'd encourage people to always check their bills quite regularly um, make sure they're accurate you know there have been a lot of cases where estimated bills people have had really shocking bills and they've been paying as you would expect by direct debit perfectly normally suddenly they get hit with a, oh, you owe us five grand, you know, that sort of thing that comes out of the blue. So we're often trying to unpick that sort of thing for people. We do a lot of three-way calling with energy suppliers and we have dedicated numbers we can contact them um, as well. So we do try and, you know, we've talk, heard a lot today about trying to empower people really, I think in terms of looking at finding their way forward. And that's very much what we try to do. Um, and try to support them with contacting their energy suppliers. The other things that we look at, things like the tariffs. So a lot of people are on historic tariffs. They might have had storage heaters in the past in their property, particularly rural homes in Norfolk. They may now have oil or LPG, or they may be on a gas network, but they may be still paying for an economy seven. So we do look at to see whether that is the most suitable um, tariff because energy companies don't tend to tell people when they're paying more than they should be. We're often encouraging people to get paper copies because most people are on a standard rate now. So they might have signed up for an online tariff in the past where it was paper, uh, sorry, online only. Um, lots of people have difficulty with accessing apps and they might have set up something and they just can't access it, which makes things even more difficult. So we do encourage people if they need paper copies to get them. I mean, just last year alone, 28 energy companies went out of business and we were finding that when people didn't have regular meter readings or they didn't have access to their online accounts, it caused all kinds of problems. And those problems are still, we're still seeing. Obviously communicating is really important if people want to let their energy companies know they've got an issue, we really encourage them to have that communication. I know it's very difficult when people get into debt it's really hard to engage often um, we would always encourage people to avoid missing payments because certainly if they are going to apply for any trust fund 
it really does make a difference to show that they're engaging. That's what one of the things the energy companies that the trusts are looking for, that people are making some sort of payment. We also encourage people to join the priority services register. So that's for energy and for water. And that just means there's extra support available to people in the event of a power cut, but also it's something they can consider if, um, if the energy company, there was a lot in the news the last few weeks around um, a lot of people being moved on to prepay meters, which traditionally was more difficult. Um, but since smart meters have been introduced, um, they do work in either smart or prepay mode. And we are finding people are being disconnected and sometimes they're not aware why their gas supply or electric supply has stopped. And sometimes it does relate to, to um, the mode that they're in and the fact that they may be in debt. Um, so applying to the priority service register can at least mean that the vulnerabilities within the household have been registered with the energy supplier. There's lots about energy tips. Um, I won't go into any detail, but there are certainly things that we do look at with people. Um, a classic example, we've had lots of, of cases where things like the hot water, the immersion, people have left them on, not realising, working the timers, the controllers, they can make a huge difference to someone's energy use. So we don't do home visits, but we look at the energy performance certificate and we look at what kind of heating systems people have. And we also try and provide information leaflets um, to people that might be able to help look at why they might have damp in their property and all those kind of issues. So um, there are things that people can do to try and reduce their energy cost um, and, and look at saving. We also do a lot of referrals to the Norfolk Warm Homes team, and there's a similar project in Suffolk. Um, and the challenge with this, I would say, is that although the criteria has changed and households with incomes of less than 30,000 um, could be eligible for support, and although most properties in Norfolk are EPC, which is the energy performance of a below C, um, so lots more households are eligible but the measures are very much focused on renewable, which isn't always suitable for a property, particularly an older property. Um, and it's also challenging that, you know, the, the kind of upheaval that would be involved in, in implementing a completely new heating system, an air source heat pump, as opposed to um, gas central heating, for example, if someone's had that before. So it's not without its challenges, but we do try and help people look at options um, and we do try and encourage people to talk to their landlords and, and talk about the responsibilities their landlords have in terms of maintaining heating and um, providing properties of adequate um, energy performance. So that's just a quick summary of all of the energy help that's available at the moment. Um, the one that's probably missing is the one that's already gone out, which was the, um, the council tax um, rebate, £150 for those people in properties A to D band. Um, we were finding that there were people who struggled to get that money. It came out through the local authorities. Um, and I guess the challenge is if you're not paying direct debits, certainly people without bank accounts, it was more difficult for them to, to access that automatically. Obviously it involved an um, application process and so on. So we did help a lot of clients through that process. Um, and what's been challenging with this 400 pounds is every energy company, it's a bit like trying to pay someone's bill. Everyone has decided to do it slightly differently. So there's no standard way people are being paid. Some are getting money off their direct debit. Some people are being paid through their bills. And I guess with some of these measures, um, the fact that the money isn't going, it's, it's sort of supporting the price increases, but it isn't necessarily going directly to people's energy bills. Um, some of the payments are obviously being paid through the DWP, um, such as the disability, uh, sorry, the, yeah, the cost of living payments, and the disability living allowances. Um, so it is quite challenging that when you're trying to help people that that isn't necessarily going to reduce their energy bill directly. It's, it's maybe going to go towards other um, bills or, or costs. Um, there's a £100 extra support, the alternative fuel payment that was announced, which we understand is being paid by the electricity supplier. I still don't have any more details on that. Keep checking with National System Advice. 
when that's going to come out. So hopefully that will be soon. Um, and the warm home discount has been announced as being slightly more and being automatic this year. But as yet, we still haven't heard exactly when that's going to reach people and when people will get their confirmation of that. Um, I guess the, the main exception for the £400 that's going out to domestic customers is those people who pay via their rent. So if they're paying their energy as part of their rent, um, or for those people, you know, we do support a lot of clients who have a submeter within their property. So if they're in a flat of house and multiple occupancy and they've got a meter and they're paying a rate often by the landlord, sometimes they might buy cards off the landlord to top up their meter. Um, and I understand some guidance has just gone out um, around how much that should be in terms of and how that should work. But some of the guidance we were also given was, you know, the challenges for renters when they're in a situation of kind of um, questioning um, questioning that and, and, and not wanting to be in a position of risking being evicted when they're, um, you know, questioning either their property they're in or how much they're being being charged for, um, for, for energy. So obviously we've heard a lot today about the Norfolk Assistance Scheme, which is brilliant. And we've often helped people to, to go through that application process. And I think particularly we do support an awful lot of people who are digitally excluded, who are not very confident, who are not very good at checking their emails. Often they don't get the application completed in time. Um, and they can fall through the gaps. Often they're not always confident in that process as well. Um, we do have some more funding or some more recent funding this year for those off gas, so helping with emergency support for oil as well as LPG. Um, people do need to be in an emergency kind of situation, so we have been able to support people through that. In the last couple of years we've been able to help a lot of people with prepay meter top up, so um, that's through the post office as well as Paypoint. Um, and, um, and also, you know, we've heard a lot about all the organisations providing brilliant support with food. And um, we often make referrals to through to their local social supermarket and so on. Um, we also help with the energy grants. And um, as I said, you know, sometimes people get themselves into a situation that's not necessarily through them not paying. You know, we've had clients, case studies where people have been paying a regular amount and they've suddenly accrued a suddenly a massive, massive bill. And it could be because their bill hasn't been calibrated frequent enough. Um, and, you know, it's not necessarily their fault. They're suddenly being told, okay, you've got 800 pounds owing. We would like you to now pay through direct debit that over the next six months. Well, you know, if they're already struggling, it's just not realistic. So in those kind of circumstances, you know, we've had a, a good case to be able to get an energy grant for people. So we're able to offer one-to-one -one energy advice appointments and we do accept referrals through um, the NCAN system and um, we do work closely with Norfolk County Council, certainly the Money Support Service, regularly send us people who we're able to, you know, explore in more detail their energy bills and, and look at ways they might be able to access help, help or support. The other project we've got this year is a carbon monoxide awareness project. So we're able to order free carbon monoxide alarms for people. Um, and we're able to really make people aware of the potential risks within their home. And, um, and I think the big, big concern is that people may not be able to afford to service the boiler. They might not be thinking about the safety aspects. They might turn to alternative forms of heat. I noticed the, um, through Northern County Council, the fire service have done quite a lot about sort of standalone heaters and their concerns about people turning to alternative heating to keep warm. Um, and there is a concern as well that that could actually be costing them more. You know, running individual heatings could run up an electric bill. Um, and, the, and the funding that's come through, a lot of that goes towards people's electric bills, but it doesn't automatically go to their gas bill. So people are having to do a bit of a juggle sometimes between, between the different supplies. Um, we do actually have a little bit of funding for boilers as well, which is very rare. Um, so I can certainly, um, if anyone does know of anyone who's in an emergency situation, we can certainly assess to see whether they may be able to get a gas boiler 
Um, but that sort of funding, I'm afraid it's a bit rare. Um, we're finding more emphasis is on renewable heating, which is obviously a challenge. And the contact details are there. We've got an email um, advice form. Anyone can contact us via, or they can get in touch via advice line. Or as I said, we're on the Norfolk Community Advice um, Network referrals through that. Oh, it's half yeah. past. <laughs> yeah, I think we've got. I think we've got a little bit of time left. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I tried to race on. through it. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a bit of a race through. Sorry about that. <laughs> we're, we're trying to cram in so much tonight. Um, I, I would just mention actually, just so that people know, I, ha I have actually uh, started some discussions with NCAN, with the uh, Norfolk Community Advice Network, about the possibility of allowing uh, parish councils to make referrals directly through that. There is some training involved and you would need to be accredited, but that, that may be a possibility um, in, in the near future that we may be able to, um, to offer to people. And if anybody has any burning questions that we won't be able to deal with, then I, I will try to put anybody here in contact with any of our speakers so that they can they can pick up things afterwards but as i said we do have a couple of minutes left if anybody has uh, a burning question caroline can, can i ask you to just uh, stop sharing your screen so i can see if people's yeah. hands uh, go up lovely anybody anybody got any um burning questions they would like to put i know i know it's 8 30 and you're probably all desperate to go and have a a, a cup of tea or a glass of wine and, and start relaxing for the evening but we we do have uh you know the, the, our four speakers here and and there is other expertise I, I know around the uh the virtual room i'm not seeing any hands go up so as i said i'll make the offer again uh that, that i will put people in contact afterwards if 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 you would like that and can I can I say thank you very much on behalf of all of you for for our speakers tonight. There's a, there's a lot to go through. As I mentioned in the chat, we will be making the uh, presentations uh, available via the uh, Norfolk ALC website, um, and uh, a, a copy of the recording of tonight's session um, will be made available via our YouTube channel, which also has all of our previous webinars and the plan is to include all of our future webinars. Um, so do keep a lookout for the stuff that's coming in the future. And thank you very much to the speakers. Thank you very much to you all for attending tonight. And I will say uh, good night and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.